B-Pod Studios. This is Talkin' Rock. Talkin' Rock. Your backstage pass to some of your favorite rock artists. Here's your host, Meltdown. Well, happy Halloween as I record this. I was going to put it out on Friday, but the guys from Saliva are dropping a brand new song, so I wanted to give... A little bit of a heads up as to uh, the new song, Time Bomb. So we'll get to that here coming up in just a few with um, Bobby Amaru from Saliva. Coming up second, it's uh, Lee Jennings from the band The Funeral Portrait. Uh, They spent this week uh, touring around. I do believe that tonight, as I record this on Halloween, uh, they're playing a show in Buffalo. Now, they played last night and opened up for the guys from Twisted on night number two of their Fright Fest uh, two nights. I talked with Madrox from Twisted earlier this week on my Talking Rock with Meltdown podcast, so go back and uh, check out that conversation if you get a chance. We'll talk with Lee coming up here in a few minutes. Both of these interviews you can watch in the Riff TV section at WRIF.com. All right, let's get into it with uh, Bobby today. He's a huge Halloween fan. We talk about Halloween. We talk about the uh, late great uh, Wayne Swinney. Also talk about, you know, his his effort to keep the saliva name and the brand out there with new music. They have a song called Time Bomb. They're dropping tomorrow as I record this on November 1st. We talk about his sobriety and a ton more. It's Bobby Amaru from Saliva to get us rolling on Talking Rock. Of course, I had to ask him about Halloween. It's his favorite time of the year, right? Dude, it is, man. I don't know if you've seen pictures of my house like on the outside, but I've got like, man, I should have done like a tour of it for you, man. Maybe I will in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I've got full blown like life size like Jasons and and uh, got the you know uh, Chucky in my window and Michael Myers in windows. It's pretty cool, man. Now you doing it? But what tattoos, horror tattoos, do you have? Oh yeah, I've got Michael right here, and I got my ghost face and my Jason, and got my kind of my Silence of the Lambs little deal right here, and um, my son drew a, a werewolf right here when he was like four years old. Oh, it's nice. Kind of, hard, kind of hard to see, but you know, that's my favorite. No, that's um, cool. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, we, we love Halloween and funny enough, my, our toddler is, is, uh, she's two and dude, she's obsessed. The whole month has been nothing but pumpkins, scary, all kind of just, she just <laughs> loves it, man. Loves it. And, uh, I did a video the other day. I got my terrifier, my art, the clown costume. Oh yeah. And I, I did a video with uh, just my daughter and son were just videoing me playing with uh, like balloons with her. Mm-hmm. And and then she came up to, to and I picked her up and she was like, Daddy, wash your hands. Well, because my gloves were dirty, you know, and she was like, wash your hands, Daddy. So funny, dude. She's how obsessed. Did, how did you like the last Terrifier? Have you seen three? I have. Yeah. Took you know? my took my. uh teens to see it i'm not gonna say kids it took my teenagers to see it and uh you know they've seen the other two and man it's brutal man that stuff's like a little i don't know if it's because um i've never seen anything in the theater like that or if if i'm just getting older and like man i don't know that's that's a, that's a little rough but it was good i mean you know for what it is and i think the uh there's a fan base for it people love that stuff man so it's good I uh, I liked it. There was two scenes I won't ever forget: the uh, sharded, the sharded glass scene, and uh, yeah. scene, of course. But uh, but I didn't understand how art came back to life. I'm still trying to figure that whole thing out. I even looked at my stepdaughter at one point. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. Art has the art has the cops head on. Spoiler alert! And then all of a sudden, now he's back to life. And I'm like, okay, I didn't really get it, dude. But, I have no idea what any of the story is about. I don't know. One from two to three. I have no idea. I just feel like when I go to watch it, I'm like, all right, a bunch of people are going to die in this movie. Let's just see how they die. You know, it's it's crazy. So um, it started. Yeah, out, I, started I have out. no idea the premise. Yeah, the, the kids getting killed at the beginning. I'm like, I'm not crazy about kids getting killed. Although the last Halloween movie, that first scene where the where the where the kid was babysitting and then he, you know he fell. I'm like, yeah, this movie is going to be the greatest Halloween ever, and it crashed pretty hard. It, Dude, it crashed right after that scene, man. It was it just like it, it actually nose dove just like the kid did, man. That was it. The end. Exactly. Maybe it that was, was bad. A sign of things to come, right? Yeah. But you know, I, I love all kinds of horror movies and horror stuff and and uh you know, we're the whole house is into it, man. We've my wife was not 
uh, typically into that stuff before she she's the one that's like the voice of reason and all that stuff like she would have left terrifier three minutes into it she would have been like nope i'm out but I um i might even go see it again in theaters i don't know i enjoyed it um you know there, there's some other ones coming up there i'm looking forward to uh, seeing and um also by the way not only is it halloween it's also uh wayne's birthday wayne's birthday yeah man he would have been uh 61 oh. you know so yeah, I know he he don't like me throwing that out how old he he actually uh, was, but you know he's it's not hard to find. Um, but yeah, he would have been sixty one, dude. He was Wayne was you know just definitely we know you know um, he was just one of the greatest humans, one of the greatest dudes, uh, you know. And uh, I, I stand by that man. And we, you know, it's it's definitely been hard without him. Um, but I feel like he's just there in spirit, man. He's, he's made a lot of cool things happen. I, I feel like from, from up above and, um, you know, with everything going on with the band and stuff. So it's, you know, there's, there's always, um, you know, I think you can take some positive too from, you know, when, when bad and, and terrible things happen like that. So, yeah, I, um, I, I've told this before and I, I think I've told you even, but it's like, I didn't know Wayne for the longest time. Here's this guy. Always wears black, got the cowboy hat, the dark shades, the long black hair, and the whole thing. I'm like, I'm like, that guy seems a little bit intimidating. Yeah. Then you meet him. I think I met him for the first time in like 2000. I met him previously, but I kind of became friends with him in like 2017, somewhere around there when you guys came yeah. to the show. And he was the nicest guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the, he used to say, um, there was one time, one show we were playing, and I forget, I think we went next door to get some food or something, and we were coming, coming back. And there were these dudes like in line, they didn't even know who he was. And they're like, well, Rob Zombie showed up because he was like in full blown, like get up and he's got his hat and everything. So he would, he would say, I like to call myself Steve Zombie, Rob's brother. You know, so it's just funny. Funny. Rob does have a brother, but not Steve, obviously. Right. That's right. Quite- so, yeah, I mean, so obviously, you know, how important is it for you to keep the saliva brand in the, in the band going now that Wayne's gone? Uh, you know, I, I tossed it up, man. And, and, you know, when he passed away, I kind of questioned whether I even wanted to do it, um, or not. And, um, had, you know, it's tough, tough decisions, man. But I thought about, you know, what he would have wanted. I thought about a lot of our conversations and kind of went back to, to a lot of that, you know, and he, he was at my house literally five, five days before, before he, um, he passed like cutting a solo on one of the last songs for the uh, revelation record. And, um, you know, that was a very, uh, fun and interesting, um, day, you know, doing that and just hanging with him. And, you know, I remember, you know, we went and got uh, Thai food and, uh, he was like, he got a number two and dude, his mouth was literally like numb on fire. Like he, I remember it like to the T dude, he could not, he could not handle it, dude. He was like, he, you know, drinking milk and water and all kind of stuff. And, um, but we had so many great times and I know how he felt about, you know, what we were doing, you know, with saliva. I knew how he felt about the new record. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes people, uh, don't give me credit either for being here 13 years. And they just kind of want to assume the early days, you know, forget all the other stuff. It's just all about the early days. And, you know, I get like the legacy of, of saliva and, um, you know, the brand and I've never disrespected that one bit, you know, and, and I've always just tried to take the high road. Uh, but sometimes man, like when things are going on, like behind your back and, and stuff too. And, uh, sometimes people just play the victim in, in all of this and you're the problem. Like I'm the issue or something as to why saliva is, uh, continuing to go on. And it's like, I'm just doing what I've been doing the last 13 years and just, which is, you know, keeping the train on the track. I felt like we did a lot of really cool things last year. We played a bunch of DWP shows and uh, a bunch of really cool festivals. You know, we got people, you know, that was fun. And, um, you know, had a really successful tour with Drowning Pool. And, you know, it just, it felt like the right thing to do was to just keep going forward, keep moving into the direction that we feel, um, 
you know, is positive and, and keeps things, um, you know, on track. And uh, it's no disrespect to the, to the old, the old stuff and the old band ever um, would take any credit away from, from any of those guys, you know, okay. uh, but I think brands, people do uh, fans, especially, you know, sometimes they forget it is a business and it is a, you know, and uh, you know, businesses do uh, still go on, you know, after, you know, members leave and, you know, so I don't know. It's always, it's always touchy. You're never going to please everybody. You know, you're always going to have people who just hate it regardless, but you can't please everybody. And I've always lived by that from day one. Like when I came in the band, it, you know, it was like, well, what are you going to say to people that don't like it? People are going to like it or they're not going to like it. You know, you can't please everyone. So. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned that, you know, the, the last record and stuff, how much stuff do you guys still have uh, that Wayne may have demoed out or played on? Do you have anything left? Tons of stuff. Oh, you do. Okay. Tons of stuff, man. I mean, we had like 34 songs oh. recorded and and we had a whole covers record recorded too. There's a lot of stuff we have recorded, man. Like so, even some old, like um, older songs recut that we never actually did anything with. Like we got a version of I Walk Alone. That's really, really great. That um, is like the Batista song for WWE. We had done, we had thought about putting on the, the, um, every 20 years EP that we did, but it just, it didn't line up because that song was in like Oh four, I think Oh four Oh five. And, uh, just the, the date, it wouldn't have made sense. So, yeah, I didn't realize you guys had so much uh, stuff. Of course, this, uh, this new song now time bomb. Now this drops as we record this on Halloween, this drops tomorrow, correct? It does, man. Yeah. Um, this song is a, a heavy duty. Um, I, I kind of liken it to myself. It's short and, and stocky. And hard hitting. <laughs> Dude, it's just, it's like two and a half minutes of just get to it. And, right. and that's what I wanted to do. That's, that's exactly, um, you know, a lot of times, like when I got in the band too, you know, you're kind of in this box of, okay, you have to stay in the saliva lane of, of what saliva is. And, but then I look at a lot of like the catalogs and a lot of the other stuff we did, like the love lies and therapy record and stuff. And there's a lot of different you know, um, emotions and a lot of different kind of songs or whatever. I was like, I don't really think you have to stay in just one lane. Um, you know, you can do anything what feels right. And it just felt right for the time and, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do. And, and, you know, we notice like there's a lot of, a lot of bands from the early two thousands that are just, they're relevant, man. They're still killing it. They're at the top of the game, you know, bands like Corn and Biscuit, and you go see them and it's like, it's in, incredible how, how, but we, what you're seeing in the crowd is my son and a bunch of other 17, 18 year old, 19 year old teenagers who never saw that stuff, you know, back in the day that, you know, that their parents did or raised them on, you know, I feel like I raised my kids on, on the, you know, the hard rock, the early 2000s, late nineties stuff. And, um, so it's like, how do, how do we write something that is almost like reminiscent of the early two thousands, but still sounds fresh and modern and, you know, kind of fits in that, that, uh, relevant form, you know? And, um, I feel like we, we, we got one here, man, and, you know, and I don't know what you think of it. Um, you know, I sent it to you, you know, I sent it to just some close friends that, you know, wanted to see what they thought. And, um, it's definitely you know. rocking it. That's for sure. It hits hard. I like it. And and like you said, it's two and a half minutes, man. It's just jam packed with, with just energy. And, um, so that was with uh, Howard Benson. Yeah, that was like bucket list for me. I always wanted to work with him. Um, you know, and then he, he started working with Veda and then that's kind of how that came into play. I was like, man, you know, we're, got some songs we're trying to do and, you know, tell me what you think of these and just sent him like, you know, 20 songs. <laughs> and, then, and he was like, you know, man, I really like these four it was. And we just like wanted to uh, do a repackage of the revelation record and um, add some more songs like a deluxe, you know? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So we want to like re-release it, you know, and vinyl and, you know, we got this really awesome picture of Wayne that'll go on the back of it and stuff too, and do this vinyl edition. And, 
we wanted to, uh, you know, just, just add some more, add some more songs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, working with him was great. And then, you know, they work with a lot of people and they're really into this whole like collab and, um, features and stuff. And this guy, Peyton Parrish kind of came up and went and checked his stuff out and talked to him on the phone. And he was a cool, really cool dude. And this guy's got like 5 million followers on Instagram. And he's like, he's just killing it in the, in the social world and in the rock world too. And then that regard. So, um, you know, he was like, said he was a fan and wanted to, wanted to jump on it. So we, we did that. It was cool. That so. sounds like uh, that song sounds like something you'd see, like, um, like played at like a, a sporting event with highlights around it. They, I would not be mad at that. Yeah, right. I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the idea, you know, and um, Howard had said that too. He's like, man, I think we should really try to stick to what's not broken. Like let's, you know, he, he's like, man, there's all these great songs. You have all these great, songs that are like holy crap but he said maybe for another time and you know i think right now you know uh rock feels uh rock is just in a great place man you know rock bands are thriving right now on tours and everyone's touring and festivals are just at you know um just killing it like why don't we just let's stick to the rock stuff let's stick to what's what's worked you know yeah so no, it's killer, dude. So what? What else? So that song comes out tomorrow, like I said, November first, as we record this. Uh, do you have any other songs done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're done. I mean, we're already like kind of in the, you know, close to the pressing the vinyl and and repackaging phase, and we're we're shooting for February, I think. Okay. So we have a tour that we're about to announce, um, uh, February March. So with with another band. So okay. See, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that or not. So. So you guys are done recording in the studio. You're all done kind of wrapping things up here for the year. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we are done, man. We are not doing any more shows um, for the rest of the year. But we have one, a, a, actually one unplugged show that we're doing. And uh, we haven't done unplugged shows since, you know, Wayne and I were, were doing them. Man, we, we used to have so much fun doing them. Me too. I mean, we had a blast. Um, haven't done one of those in a long time, but we're doing one for, um, um, JJR in Orlando. Okay. So yeah, for their, their like little December uh, deal. So doing that and then that's it. You mentioned the uh, Danny Wimmer uh, festivals. Uh, how many, how many of those festivals uh, stops did you guys make? We did three. We did Rockville, Sonic Temple and Louder Than Life. Okay. Yeah. What, what's it, what's it like to to play at, at a, on a big stage like that? And then with, with some of your maybe peers and maybe even heroes in attendance. Um, it was great, man. It was, uh, it was really awesome. You know, no matter what slot you have, just being a part of it, it just feels good. And, uh, the crowd, you know, it's so diverse. Like everybody like is there for like a certain band or a few bands and it's this whole thing. And, um, I think he does, he does the festivals, right, man. I don't think anybody can really compete with them in, in America with how he does them. Um, treats all the bands very well, no matter what slot you're in. Once again, you know, it's every band gets treated really good. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I've known Danny for a long time. A lot of people don't know that I lived with him in 2001 no in, LA, in LA when he was working for Fred's label flawless. Cause they tried to sign my band at the time. And, uh, so, and Danny was the A&R. So we, we lived with them, dude, like the puddle of mud had just came out. They were like blowing up and that was their band, you know? So, I'm sleeping on the air mattress that Wes Gantlin slept on for, you know, no. I don't think Danny has that air mattress anymore, but I won't hold know. that against you, by the way. Uh, right. Uh, when was the last time you were on stage? And you were told you couldn't cuss. Oh, that was recent. Oh, when, it was. Yeah. Actually in Las Vegas of all places um, was a few weeks ago. We had a show with skillet. And we got a, um, we got a, I got an email. I don't remember who it came from. I think it was like the Live Nation rep or something or AEG rep. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was like, uh, time slot, uh, not allowed to cuss, uh, no, um, in trying to incite any sort of, uh, <laughs> uh, rioting on stage or any of that stuff, which I mean, I've, 
you know, wouldn't, wouldn't do that anyway. And, and then it was like uh, no alcohol allowed on uh, backstage or and premises. I don't drink. I was like, not worried about that, you know? So uh, I've been six years sober. So I'm like, all good, but, but not, not cussing though. I mean, you got me there. I was like, you, you got me, but it was fine. And I, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, it was, it was funny. Cause I never thought about what words, I, how I would change the words when it got to those parts. Yeah. So man, that was actually funny because I did like, I did mess up a couple times. <laughs> I, I didn't cuss, but I just like the word that I probably should have said turned into like just a blah and, <laughs> And then it just threw me off, but, um, yeah. but it was a great show. And, and those are, that's a great band and they got, they're awesome people, man, John yeah. and, and, uh, you know, and them are really, really cool. Yeah. Very great people. And, um, yeah, I like those guys a lot. Yeah. Six years sober. I just saw that that was within the last couple of weeks. Correct. Yeah. 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 Well, actually a few days ago I was at Halloween horror nights with my kids and wife and kids. Um, on Sunday, we, you know, we were close with the Van Zant's with Johnny, you know, Van Zant and stuff. And we, we went along with, with his, him and his daughters and family and wife and stuff. So we did the RIP, um, stuff at Halloween Horror Nights, man. That was a blast. It was a good time. That's it. And, and that was the day that I was like six years and I totally forgot. I had no idea until like I was, I remember like he, someone asked me if like I wanted a beer or something. I was like, no, man, I'm good. And I'm like, I think my wife was like, yeah, he's like, six years sober. What date is it? And I was like, it's like the 27th. And I looked at my phone. I was like, that's today. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't realize. Like crazy. Yeah. Boy, time flies. I even think I, I think I even broke congratulations on your thing. It feels like three weeks ago now. I just, <laughs> it, man, you know, you, my it, life. you're doing a lot of, you're doing a lot, man, you know, and, and you know, it's always something going on, even here around here, man. I can't like, I, it's like, I forget, I forget things. And, um, you know, for me, it's just another, it's another year, uh, of, you know, I'm happier. I'm just, I feel much better. I just, you know, I think like, you know, had some fun times. I'm not going to lie, man. I did, you know, but you, you just realize, you know, sometimes you want to make positive changes in your life and you want to just do the right thing and, and try to, uh, you know, be a good person. And there are those things that can just hinder that, you know, at times. So, well, um, it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. And you got to decide like which lane you fall in, I suppose. Correct. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, cause, cause people will ask me all the time, dude, how did you do it? And I'm like, I really don't know. Like, I think that I've had people ask for advice and stuff. And it's like, you have to find what works for you. You have to want to do it. First of all, like you have to just be ultimately committed. You can't go in like, Oh, maybe I'll just try it. Like you got to go head first into it. And um, yeah, hey, we can definitely, change your life, lots of health benefits. Um, you know, you're always felt like I stayed at like this weird, like weight. And then you, when you stop, when you quit drinking and you cut it out, I mean, man, it's, you'll lose weight and you'll, it's all kind of things that you feel better, you know, more clarity with your thinking. And also you're dealing with BS, you know, all the BS that happens, like instead of just drinking to numb it and it's still there, you're like, you know what? bring it on. Let's just, let's go head on with it. And then, you know, you get through it, you work through it, you know, work through your problems and, you know, no, it's really cool. I mean, I, the number of people I know in rock bands, and that's gotta be a hard thing because, you know, like Brad, Brad Arnold from three doors down told me, he's like, he's like, yeah, I was just looking for something to do the other 22 hours of the day when we were playing and he started drinking. And he told me, you know, I mean, told me here on an interview just like this. So it's not like I'm, you know, talking out of school, but, Everybody has their reasons. Uh, Chris Henderson from Three Doors has his reasons. Brent from Shine Down. All these guys. Yeah, and well, I mean, you 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 realize that you know if Bobby starts drinking, you know, a bunch of Crown, and then he ends up, you know, taking a shot of tequila or whatever, then good luck asking him what he did the night before. You know, it's just he, and and there's just everybody's different, right? And I feel like doesn't make you like a bad person. It's just know your limit, know your it's be responsible too, you know, and yeah. drink responsibly, you know, as they say. And 
I just got to a point where I couldn't really do that. I was like really, dr- I was drinking to get messed up and, um, you know, you, you have some, some things going on upstairs that you can't control and a lot of that. And you're like, I've really got to eliminate, you know, the, the things that I feel are toxic and poisonous. And that was the first thing that I eliminated and felt like, wow, this is okay. I'm going to try this. So yeah, I, 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 three hours down, man, Brad, love those guys, man. He's a, such a good dude. And, you know, we saw Creed, we took my kids to see Creed recently and all those guys are great dudes, man. It's, it's Scott. It's good to see him like sober and stuff too, man. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, no, he's, he's in a great way too. Uh, but, um, yeah, Matt from pop evil used to be in pop evil. He told me one time he said, uh, he was just waking up the next day, apologizing to everybody and he didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And yeah. Some, well, some people are like that, you know? So. Well, yeah. And I mean, like, I think, but it's what works for me to quit might not work for him or somebody else. You know, it's just, you got to find, you got to find what, what works for you. And, um, I always feel like, I think that, you know, there's always a way, you know, if, if you want to make the change and, you know, you're apologizing to people or whatever, I, I did the same stuff, you know, and you, I just didn't want to be known as that. You know, I wanted to, um, wanted to have a good work relationship with people and I didn't want people like to quit tours and be like, I can't work with that guy, you know, or whatever. I, I never wanted to be that guy, you know? I, so I want to play music and, and, and tour and be a family guy and just, and love everybody, man. I got nothing but love for everyone. So uh, wrapping things up here, uh, since it is Halloween with, I mean, obviously you got the tattoos on your, on your arms, like you were showing us. So what are your like go-to like must see Halloween movies? If you were to give, I don't know, three or four. Oh man, I like the Scream franchise. Always liked Scream One. I think it's a brilliant movie. I really do. I think it's it's one of those things that could have totally been real life happened. Like you know, um, I think uh, I like you know Nightmare on Elm Street One. It's always good, and Three was good too. I do like. I always like People Under the Stairs. Okay, you know? I, I but like we watched a lot of them, especially during October, we'll go back and rewatch some and we'll just like, be like, Oh my God, it's like the worst movie ever. <laughs> but, um, but somehow if I had to say like favorites, like, you know, obviously like, I still think the exorcist is the scariest movie of all time. I still do. Because when you think about like the year it, they made it and like just everything that goes along with it, man, like you can't, I don't know, dude, you can't direct acting any better and you can't, I'd be just, I don't know. That movie always freaked me out. I thought um, like, uh, you know, like um, to me, the movies that scare me the most are, I think, you know, are, are the creepiest are the ones that could actually happen. Like the first two Rob zombie movies I thought were pretty crazy, but going back even further, like um, Texas chainsaw massacre, it's like you're out in the middle of nowhere with this just crazy group of family, you know, this yeah. Family and it's like you, your car breaks down. Next thing you know, who knows what's going to happen? You know, it's always kind of freaked me out a little bit. Yeah, I um, I love all that stuff. You know, I uh, there's a lot of newer movies that are out that I'm still not really um sure so sure on. Like what? Um, what's the one that we? Oh God, The Strangers. The Last Strangers was the worst movie that I've ever seen in my entire life. You mean the first, so, the first one just came out? No, the Strangers one with Liv Tyler came out like years ago. That was great. Then they made like another one. It was okay, and then they just put this other one, Chapter One, out, and it was I, like, it was like they redid the first movie, but just way worse. Well, I, okay, I I haven't seen the first, but I I did kind of like the Strangers. I thought Strange Darling was pretty wild. Did you see that movie? It was shot in six scenes, and they were out of sequence. No, but I, I need to see that. That was interesting. I thought that was really good. Um, Long Legs was kind of creepy. Long Legs was great. Yeah, I, 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 li- I liked it. I was like, a lot of people were kind of mixed on it. Like, they just thought that it was, like, real slow. And I was like, no, dude, because when it got to the parts, it was intense, man. That's what you're waiting on, you know? So yeah. 
I thought long, was like, great. Yeah. Um, uh, Thanksgiving from last year. I kind of liked if you're in a, I, I think you'd like that. I, I did like it. Yeah. Slasher, uh, flick, man, like, you know, old school. I like the throwback stuff, the old school. I think that's why Terrifier is so popular is it just has that throwback eighties, nineties feel to it, you know, and people really like the nostalgic, the nostalgic stuff. I think even with music, like that's why a lot of the bands from the early two thousands are just, there's this whole resurgence, you know, um, yeah, you know, one of my buddies, Sam from Let Biscuit, you know, put, he's a bass player and we, we go to lunch all the time and I'm always like showing him like these TikTok videos of like Let Biscuit. I'm like, bro, you, you guys are like the most viral rock band on TikTok. Like yeah. it's like crazy, like, you know, and, uh, you know, you've been around 30 years. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's our discovery. It's just, right. So as I said, it's all those teenagers, man, that are just finding, finding those bands that we all loved growing up and um you know and, and it just has this organic feel man it's not real forced it just everybody just has an identity it just i don't know i love all that i love all that stuff now you're talking creed and they're playing sold out shows everywhere so Dude, yeah right have you, have you seen have you seen that tour yet not yet i'm going to see in a couple of weeks because uh, they played here this summer and i had my i had my motorcycle night every wednesday and i couldn't make it that night but yeah i'm going to be watching it for sure yeah man they're like blowing fire man and stuff it's not, it, they sounded great honestly like we did a bunch of shows with scott Stapp um a couple of years ago man and he was he was awesome he was awesome uh vocally man just you doing you know but seeing him like with the with creed and and all it was like it was really cool to see. They sounded great. And, you know, him vocally sounded really good. So, Well, I'll tell you what, Bobby, this thing's going to cut me off here in a couple minutes, but I want to thank you for your time. Time Bomb is coming out November 1st, the 29th anniversary of me at this radio station, if you can believe that. 29 years. Wow, dude. No, oh, kind of crazy, huh? Bro, I just turned 29. I can't believe it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, happy Halloween. Yes. Up next is Lee Jennings from the band The Funeral Portrait. These guys have really had quite a year. I actually interviewed Lee a few months back before the record dropped. It came out, appropriately enough, on September 13th. Uh, they've got all sorts of uh, uh, guest stars, some collaborations. Uh, Spencer Charnas from Ice Nine Kills on the title track. And uh, just really cool stuff uh, from these guys. Yeah, I've talked about this before, and I talked about it with them last time. Uh, but yeah, we were in... Eloise Asylum here in Michigan uh, back on August the 6th. And we heard some crazy stuff <laughs> uh, that night. And um, I- I'm skeptical about everything paranormal, but man, it was insane. Anyways, we'll talk about that and much, much more coming up with Lee Jennings from the Funeral Portrait as he joined me in studio before they played a big show with Twisted on the uh, night of October 30th. Here's Lee and myself in conversation on Talking Rock. Hey, I'm just hyped to be here. You know, it's funny. Uh, I was uh, I went down to Nashville a few months ago. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. No, it's the beginning of October. Hello, a few months ago. Anyways, so I'm <laughs> I'm 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 driving up 75, and I thought of you because I passed one of those Buckeyes. Oh, Buckeyes, <laughs> so it's Buckeyes, Buckeyes. Yeah. Did you not stop? You know what's funny? Because everybody asked me that. They're like, "Why didn't you stop?" And I'm like, "You know, I probably should have." Yes. Next time, listen. You literally have to stop. It will change your life. Now, you you kind of had like this Bucky's mascot thing with like your green hair. Like, wh- how'd that come about? Yeah. So, okay. Long story short, I've posted a few times. I like Bucky's, right? And the reason why is because being in a touring band, right? You like a few things, right? And the biggest thing that we like are clean bathrooms. Okay. Right? Because we don't get to go home to a clean bathroom all the time, right? right? Yeah. And most of our shows, we don't get hotels for because we've got an RV or whatever it is. So we don't need that. Right. So a clean bathroom. And that is number one, the thing that you can always count on with Bucky's. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I drove by, I think I want to say it was in Kentucky. Now I don't think we have any of those up here. So I don't, I don't really understand the fascination. I mean, the clean bathrooms, that's great. But what else does they have? Um, so the food is great. Okay. Right? So, and then they're always open. It looks so, huge, too, by the way. It is huge. So they normally have, like, 200 gas pumps. Wow. So you never have to wait in line to get gas. No kidding. So, and okay. then uh, it can get a little hectic, though. So depending on the time that you go, be careful. All right. So because it can, it could get a little too crazy. So, um, But there's just something. I The reason why I love it, though, is I like a good brand. 
So I'm a huge brand nerd. So I love something that is branded really well. And a cute little guy, Bucky, (laughs) being branded on a gas station is the coolest thing I could ever see. So... I don't know. The, you know, we started touring about 10 years ago, and the first time I saw one was in Texas, because that's where they're from, because, of course, everything's bigger in Texas, right, right, apparently. Right. So <laughs> even their gas stations, yeah. that's like their thing. So I was like, you know what? We're going to stop. We stopped, and I fell in love. You know, And since then, I've posted about it, and some of our fans decided to turn me into Bucky. And now <laughs> we sell the shirts, and we can't keep them. You know? like, Have I mean, they like, contacted you about that? Shh. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Not yet. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, you just, you know, you. It's one of those. You know, you ask for forgiveness, right? Kind of moments. It's, so yeah, it sounds like my father years ago told me, yeah, it gets sued. It'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I, I will say that we did try an April Fool's joke uh, this year on Instagram. I tried to post that you can now find our merch at Bucky's. Right. Mm. I don't know what happened. But we got banned on Instagram for like two weeks. Really? Because I guess we shared, because I guess the Bucky's logo, because this was before I wasn't using our logo, the the fake Bucky's logo, yeah. me as Bucky. I used their logo. Apparently they have it copyrighted, right? Now that if you post, it, post anything on Instagram that is copyrighted and you do not own it, it will buy their technology. It will instantly like stop you from posting and we got banned for like two weeks and I was freaking out. I was like, of course, my <laughs> April Fool's joke backfired on me. That's so funny. Well, we could sit here and talk about uh, uh, chain gas stations uh, all afternoon, but let's not. Uh, but no, it's funny. I just I just thought about you. I was driving. I'm like, right, yeah. Next time yeah. you literally have to and you got to message me. and You'll be like, I get it. now. OK, all right. You'll, right. you'll join the cult. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so how's things been going for you, man? I was I was thinking to myself uh, earlier today. Um, your life has had to have changed a lot since you were here last year. Insane. Yeah. I mean, which is the crazy part is because, you know, last year we played the same festival, you know, but we were the opener. Right. You know, tonight we're the direct support, you know, and it was one of those things that it's like thinking about how much our lives have changed and changed in a year, you know, and, and even to the moment that we met you earlier this summer, yeah. you know, to now, you know, and now having this song on the Billboard charts and all these crazy, the media based charts and all all this stuff happening for us. And it's like, you know, next year getting emails for next year already, you know, and we're a year ago. I was begging, being like, what, what do we have for next year? What do we have for next year? And now I'm looking at our schedule. and I'm like. Oh, so I'm not going to be home next year. That's good to know. You know? <laughs> no, that's great. I saw you guys are already booked for Sonic Temple, which is yes. killer. Yes. I'm so excited for that one. So yeah. I've, I've seen, I mean, the lineup for that. I mean, we're playing the day that Linkin Park's playing, yeah. you know, and that's, that's crazy. You know, like the idea of having our band on the same festival as a band like that. I just never thought that would happen. Right. And so seeing stuff like that, I'm grateful for and I think that's something that I wish a lot of bands kind of had to go through is like the years of grinding Mm. (laughs) because there are some bands that just they release a song and it blows up and then they never have to do the grind Mm. right or an artist or whatever it is right and for us we did basically 10 years of that right and now seeing the rewards of our many years of grind uh it makes us still humble I think I think it makes us still real um, and I still do it like every single night. I still go to merch, all these things, even though like we might have some crazy fans out there that, you know, <laughs> that will be a little bit too much to handle some days. You know what, though? I don't care because I'll still go because I'm grateful for it. Right. It, well, this is what you wanted. Now you have it. So you have to you have to live in that world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of it, too, is, you know, at first I, I didn't know how to handle it. You know, there was a little bit of moments of just being like. Oh my God, I check my DMs. I'll post something and I'll check my DMs and I get like 70 messages. And I'm like, oh, and that's just the messages, not the comments or not all these other things. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Like, how am I going to supposed to do this? Where I'm normally, I respond to everyone and I I carry a conversation on or I I don't just say thank you. I say thank you, you know, or how's your day going too? You know, stuff like that because I'm also a huge fan of just like not acting like I'm so important because I'm just a human. I just get to carry around a microphone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's kind of how I feel. And so it's weird 
sometimes when people act like they're all high and mighty when they're just they're just a human too, you know. Well, yeah, it's right. It's, it's like, you know, social media nowadays, and I find it with myself, it's almost like a second job, you know? And, and you, you want to listen, you want to touch people. And uh, always remember this because Lizzie Hale told me this years ago, and a truer statement has I've yet to hear. But she told me that Ronnie James Dio told her one time that you may not remember the names of the faces, but they'll always remember meeting you. So be nice to everybody. And it's yes. like, I've always remembered that. No, and that's the truth, you know? And, and I think. For me, I try and give every single person the time of day. Sure. Right? Like, I, I'm I'm here because of them. You know what I mean? Like, they always thank us for coming to their city or whatever, you know, especially like we just did these two Canadian shows, right? And they, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of tours that really don't go up there, you know? Where, what cities? Uh, we did Toronto and Ottawa. Oh, I yeah. Well, those, those are pretty big cities in they Canada. They are. Sure. Yeah. But with those, they were both like, we still don't get enough mm-hmm. right of the bands that we love and stuff and so they were thanking us for coming there and i'm like no 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 i thank you for showing up like i'm gonna be here right. like I, I i have to right be here, yeah right? yeah they don't have to be they don't have to be and i i think people again forget that right and that again that's why i still go to merch every single night and talk to everybody that i can do a free meet and greet because like again i think that's another world that yeah i know money's tough and i know having to pay to meet someone at a certain level is important because like again bring up lizzie hale you can't just lizzie hale can't go to merch right you know what i mean like mm-hmm. that's just not gonna happen right she's not gonna meet three thousand ten thousand people every night right that's not gonna happen with us it's you know meeting 300 people or 500 people or whatever it is 200 people i can deal with that yeah. right every night You know, eventually, if it gets a little bit too crazy, (laughs) uh, maybe I won't, but I'll try somewhat. You know, and again, growing up, um, I remember going uh, in Atlanta. We have a place called the Tabernacle, and I knew exactly where the buses were parked, and I knew exactly where the barricades for those buses would be. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they get off stage, I run, run, run outside, go right to the barricade, because every single time those bands, they would come up and they'd say, hi, hello, you know, sign something, take a photo, and then leave. I don't see that nowadays anymore. So who were some great experiences that you had with uh, back as you were when you were a kid? Oh, wow. Um, I think two. there's two really big ones that kind of changed everything for me. And it's so super funny because they were both the same tour names, but different years. So it was the Nintendo Fusion Tour. OK, <laughs> and it was Evanescence. That was okay. my first show I ever like really went to. It was at the Tabernacle and Evanescence. They were the headlining band i think cold was also on the show i don't remember i was a huge nintendo nerd and this is how i got into music i was a huge nintendo nerd and in my nintendo power magazine there was an ad for the nintendo fusion tour with evanescence and then down at the bottom it said come play new games before they're released and i said i want to go play those games i don't care about the rock show because i didn't know music at the time right right? and i was like oh my god so i like begged my mom so we went right but beforehand we checked out Evanescence, right? And I was like, I loved her because I loved Amy Lee because of her voice. Because at the time, I was doing nothing but like chorus and, and stuff like that. I wasn't into rock music, you mm-hmm. know, really. And so I was like, oh, she has such a unique voice for rock music. So I went and I remember going to play like video games. And then I went upstairs at the Tabernacle because there was kind of like two levels. And I saw Evanescence play. And I was like, oh, my God. I want to do that, (laughs) you know, and that was one of those moments. And then outside, I got to see her. I didn't really get to meet, meet her kind of a wave, but she was there. There was too many people. Yeah. Especially for me being like, I was like 13 at the time. So it was one of those moments. But then the next year, the same tour came around and I got into music a little bit that year, but nothing too crazy. The next tour came around and it was Nintendo Fusion Tour and it was My Chemical Romance. Okay. Um, And they weren't even the headliner. I think Story of the Year was the headliner, but at that time my kim was blowing up uh you know and, and i just remember going out to that barricade as soon as they were done and i just waited and waited and guess what here comes my chemical romance out to the barricade and i got to meet them and that was like again i want to do that right you know? and that's those are the moments that i know that if i felt that way i'm sure there's a bunch of other kids currently that maybe will feel that way meeting me or mm-hmm. meeting their other favorite artists or meeting someone else in the band or whatever it is, you know, and that's the most important thing to me 
you know, is, is helping almost like um, I talk about it, the, the passing of the torch is very important. Um, and it's something that rock music needs to be more dedicated to um, be less of a competition and more of us carrying this torch together mm. and passing it to the right bands at the right moments. Um, and I and I will agree that I think, um, you know, and I give a huge applaud to uh, Five Finger Death Punch for taking us out on that last tour and kind of giving us that torch, you know, of, of being like taking a chance on a small band. They didn't need us on that tour. We right. didn't do anything to that tour. Maybe sell an extra 10 tickets a night or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they were going to they were going to sell out those places anyways. Right. You know, so it was super cool for them to bring out a band that nobody has really heard before and give us a 20 minute opening slot an hour and a half after doors too. So mm-hmm. we're playing to these packed rooms mm-hmm. and they didn't have to do that. But I think they're starting to realize that these younger bands need a shot, you know, and or there's not it, nothing's going to be left. You right. know, it's all going to be gone. Well, you know, you got your fans out there, people that love you, they come and see you. You know, you made fans of the five figure death punch. Yep. And then you got fans that say you're zesty AF. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, the zestiness. So the zestiness. So 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 somebody left a comment about one of your shows. <laughs> so. Okay, it was the Five Finger Tour. Oh, it was I okay. I, yeah, so I don't remember I don't remember what the show was he talked about. I don't remember what it was, but he he said You're talking about the guy that yes, made his comment. Yes, yeah. that left this comment. His his name's Anthony something. I blocked out his last name. Okay. I know him. I've okay. seen him. I I wonder if Anthony knows that this whole thing is now because of him. Yeah. But it gets long story short, I'm checking Facebook comments because I like to respond to them. I like to see what's going on and this one guy, like we didn't really get a lot of negativity from the tour, which mm-hmm. I was surprised from comments on Facebook. And I went, I checked this in. He's like, you know, oh, you know, I went to this show and the funeral portrait sucked. Uh, you know, the singer was the, the, it was like something like the tall green man was on stage looking all zesty AF, you know, <laughs> like twirling around on stage. It, they sucked. You know, at the very end, it said they sucked or something like that, too. So I posted that comment on on uh, Facebook and on like Instagram everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now, all of our socials, you know, blacked out the guy's name. And I said, the reviews are in. <laughs> We're zesty AF, you know, or come to a show, you know, come to a devotion ceremony, what we call our shows. And and I listed all the tour dates and it kind of went a little viral, like and it went super viral in our world. Right. right. Of the of the funeral portrait and all. Oh, my God. So many people started commenting. Oh, my God. You guys are zesty. AF, you know, all this stuff, all this stuff. And so the next day I was like. You know, it was during the hurricanes that had just swept through uh, like North Carolina or yeah. that, that whole area that really did a lot of damage. And uh, the new the second one was coming through Florida literally at that time. And I was like, you know, I would love to because every year we do kind of like a charity shirt um, or song or anything. We do at least one thing a year that's that helps a charity. And so I was like, we haven't done anything this year. Let's make a shirt with that guy's comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> and post it for charity, right? And I posted it, and we went live that day. And I think we've raised over, I think it was close to $13,000 oh, wow. for a charity for hurricane victims. No and I was like, I was surprised. Yeah. I mean, I was really surprised. <laughs> so, because I, I, didn't, I didn't expect that of, you know. But I think there's two things there. One, people like the story of it, but two, I think people want to give back, you know, people want to help and they're getting something in return. It's not like they're just donating. Right? Well, it is funny because in the 35 years I've been in this business, I've never heard of a band referred to as zesty. So that was kind of different. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And, and you know, I know, you know, we are definitely zesty, right? We're are a you? Little wi- <laughs> no, we're a little wild. Okay. We're a little wild on stage. We do a little bit of our, our funness, you know, we, we're, we are a little wild, right? So, you know, and I think they also see guys with makeup and, you know, dyed hair and stuff like that. And they might think, oh, oh you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is, especially opening maybe for five finger death punch or something like that. But like, I don't know, like that's what makes us us, you know, but that's also why people I think like us is that, you know, we are different, especially for the rock world. Right. You know, I think I think it is time for rock music to have a little zest you know like <laughs> I, i'm being honest i i think i think it there is now if there is a time that a um 
a band like us could exist in the rock world and be quote successful you know um i think it's now you mm-hmm. know and and that's that's why i'm kind of glad that it did take us 10 years to get here because I, I don't think we were ready i also don't think the rock world was ready you know and i i don't think um most people would have understood what we were doing then 10 years ago where now you know i think we've kind of found this outcast of groups of, of people and it's cool you know we, we're selling this shirt right now that has stay weird on it it just literally says stay weird has our logo on it right and that's one of the songs from our record mm-hmm. uh, it's the more ballady song and on our headlining shows we've been playing it and and people are crying to it you know we had two people propose we had a people propose you know at during one of our shows during stay weird you know mm-hmm. and it's like it's now turned into this like anthem you know and again i don't think if we would have done that 10 years ago, it would have hit the same way, you know? Mm-hmm. So you, you dropped record, Suffocate City, back on September 13th. Yep. Um, obviously, a monumental step in your guys' progression. What is it like dropping a, a record like that? That, If I'm not mistaken, you guys have had these songs kicking around for years. Yes. So it's, what was it like when it dropped? Oh, it was, it was kind of funny. Um, the moment it dropped, we were actually in a bar in... Uh, Oh my God! Outside of Boston, we were at the Silver Scream Con. Spencer from Ice yeah, yeah, Kills, yeah. he has that con, right? So, so George, our manager, right? Who we're very connected with him and a lot of things like the thing that we're doing tonight. Right. He runs that as well, yeah. and it's one of those things. He got us added to that to play an acoustic set, right? And <laughs> and they oversold hotels at where the convention was being held, and. We go to check in because it's under my name and it was supposed to be two rooms. I go to check in. They're like, oh, so we have one room. And I'm like, what do you mean? There's eight of us. And so we go and we go look in and a floor. We've slept on floors before, right? This hotel room was smaller than this room. Okay. <laughs> Had two beds, right? No sofa, hardwood floors, mm. nothing. Just a TV and two beds, really. It was like a little pod. Yeah. In a little bathroom. And I'm just like, I don't know what we're going to do. Like, we can't sleep eight people in two beds. Yeah. Like, no matter how much we try, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm not sleeping on a hard wood floor. So we're sitting, we walk outside. It's about, to, our record's about to be released to the world. And we're all like down in the dumps, like, oh man, what are we going to do? We're all exhausted. So we had flown off the Five Finger Death Punch tour to do this convention and then fly right back to it. And we're just like, I don't know. So we're sitting at this bar all disappointed. And then my alarm goes off that it's midnight. And I'm like, yay, the record's out, <laughs> you know? And eventually, George calls, he's got another room. They found one more open somewhere else. So they they moved some of us over to there. That was great. It was just that funny moment of us waiting for, like you said, like five years to release a record, and it's finally here, and we're spending it kind of disappointed in a bar <laughs> because we're exhausted, you know? And it just was, how you had imagined it. Exactly, you know? Like, it, that's that was so funny because we were like, oh, my God, we've waited so long for this moment, and... <laughs> and now, and now, and now we're sitting in a bar outside of Boston, depressed, being like, "Oh no, how are we going to sleep? We're so tired." No, that's great, man. Well, con- con- congratulations on your success, dude. The uh, the record's killer, and uh, it's just uh, it's so much fun. And like we were talking about when when I was walking up here with you, I will forever be connected with the band after we had a paranormal experience. At least we think we did. We're we not did. exactly sure, but I, no, I don't know what was no going on. no think we did. So you're telling me right now, as we stand here, there's for, no way. To, what else would have been? No, I'm just saying it wasn't one of your buddies. No, in the band. No, 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 no. Because I've talked to them multiple times about it. Yeah. Because as you know, they like to have fun, and because they, you know, right. they jumped and scared us and a yeah. little bit. Yeah, you right, you yeah. remember that moment? That yeah, was, that was a funny. Yeah. That was funny. But no, if you remember, everybody at that moment was counted for because they were either with the other group or they were with us. Right. So. And there was, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say somebody from Eloise was actually out in the hallway at that point, or they were close to the door or yep. something like that. But uh, they yeah, were that they was were out uh, in the hallway, and it didn't uh, it didn't come from the hallway. That was the weird part. I, it came from like a completely different part, and then the idea that the other group didn't hear it, which is even crazier. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I've played it for several of my friends in the paranormal world, world and different people. I post it on paranormal websites, and nobody's been able to, like, pinpoint it as to what those noises were. We heard, like, screams in the distance. And, of course, I grabbed you right away because I thought somebody was screwing with us. Dude, yeah, well, that's what it, it felt like that, you know? But if you remember, we were messing with those tools, right? right? The we lobotomy were, tools, the, yeah. lobotomy tools. And, and I just remember us being like, no way, dude. We were just all, like, freaking out. Yeah. You know? Like, I, I could not believe that that... That was insane. That was weird. So I, I had been in that place twice before you guys. Okay. And it's like, look, I, I was talking with someone about this here today. When they bring out the um, all the instruments and some of the, the stuff, it's like, yeah, eh, I'm a little skeptical about that. Yep. When you hear something that come, comes from, see, you know. That, see, that was the whole thing, too, is because I'm not, I don't know, I wouldn't believe it either, right? But the, you saw, like, the flashlights going on yeah, and off and stuff like and that. Like that. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I, it, there's a lot of things that scientifically can make stuff like that. Same with radios and stuff like right, that. There's right. so many, especially, like, we'll be our in-ear wireless units will pick up radio stations or right. what sound like hauntings from the dead, you know, or whatever <laughs> it is, you know? And it's like it, sometimes, you know, depending on what city you're in, especially in Detroit, you know, there's a lot of radio towers around here. So it's yeah. like, you know, I don't know. I was just one of those moments of being like, okay, I believe, like, I believe <laughs> this is real. That was like, nuts. So anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll actually include that in the description of this interview, but Hey man, have fun. Some of the guys from uh, twisted love those guys and yes. George and everybody and uh continued success. And we'll see you next time you're here in yes. the motor city. Thank you so much for having me. This has been incredible. Lee Jennings and Bobby Amaru today on talk and rock. Good to hear from uh, both those guys, uh, two lead singers from two very different bands, two very different uh, points in their career as well. So good to uh, talk to both of them. I've gotten to know both those guys uh, over the past uh, several years. Well, I've known Bobby probably for, I don't know, the better part of 10 or 15 years. Just a good guy right there. And uh, Lee, like I said, we had that paranormal experience, and that's something I'll just never forget if it was indeed paranormal. But um, anyways, go uh, support these bands. Check out the uh, brand new music from Saliva with Time Bomb coming out. And of course, uh, the Funeral Portraits Suffocate City is uh, out right now. Hey, thanks so much for checking out the podcast. Thank you for listening to Talk and Rock with Meltdown. You can help this podcast grow by giving it a five-star rating and writing a review on Apple and iTunes. Plus, feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, thanks for listening to Talk and Rock.